I'm Daily Fix and welcome to my tutorial campaign. This is episode 2 and I hope to get into mining a bit. Previously I told you that we would save up to closely half a million before we could start that and I have done that. So let's get into our cockpit view and take a look at the map. Now when you start in the, the Lone Gun uh, campaign, you do have the Argon Wharf over here. And yes, you could just pretty much buy yourself a low preset Vanguard mining drill. But is this the mining drill you want? There are several options for you to select and I will just go over a few of them. So in order for us to get a better understanding of how this universe works, we are going to look for the highway. Now for us that is extremely easy because it will just start in second contact 2 over here. So that is where we will be heading towards. And when we get towards the highway, we're going to be... How do you say that right? Tag along, I guess? Entering the highway, something like that. And we're going to do a full circle because most of the vanilla factions have their shipyard and their wharf in systems that are next or actually ne not next to the highway but they have them in systems that have the highway in there let us just get towards the highway and ride it one time and i'll just quickly get the ships that we could potentially uh, get so I just did a full circle of the highway and this is it guys. There are several wharfs that we could potentially buy ships at. Unfortunately, not all of the factions have a good enough relationship with us. So not everyone is going to be selling us ships. Now, when you start the game, there is another thing that you might not be aware of. If you go to filters, and then you go to these three dots, there are some options that you could potentially turn on or off. Uh, one of them is show faction color. Now, I like to play around with the faction color. Because I know which station belongs to what faction instead of which faction I have a somewhat decent relationship with or a somewhat negative relationship with. You need to have at least negative 9 for you to dock up with wharves or stations belonging to factions in which you do not have a very positive relationship with luckily that isn't too difficult and i'm sure just by killing criminal traffic and not shooting the station by accident you can just get that for us we're just going to be showing faction colors because i think that's just adds a lot of variety and i like that a lot so let's get out of this. So we have the Taladi. And I will just go over this really quickly. Because I'm going to be comparing them to you a bit differently. What we need to keep in mind is that this particular ship on a low preset will cost us 385,000 credits. The Parsec. On a low will cost me 351,000 credits. However, it will take some time for the ship to be constructed because we are currently missing resources. This is not a huge problem. It just takes a tiny bit more time. The last faction that is currently on the map in which we can buy is of course the Argon Federation in this particular start. And that ship was 388. So 
Out of the top of my head, it would be the most expensive option. But I would have to actually watch back my uh, footage because I have a terrible memory. So for the comparison of these ships, you can go into your encyclopedia. By hitting M, you have this book. And by discovering those locations and actually, you know, having some interaction with it, you can now set up. And I'll just quickly do that again with one of the ships by adding a ship, going to medium size, and then looking for the this one on the low preset again. So here we are. We are now able to compare those ships. In terms of hull, you know, that's all great. Not too interesting. What I do think is important is shields. Your mining ships are sometimes being harassed by the Kach. One of those words that I will never be able to pronounce completely. But having more shields does equal some more survivability. In terms of speed, it is also the slowest ship. But with a very minimal margin. The traveling drive, it brings us to the Plutus with... Well, it's actually quite fast. But its fastness does result in a lower container storage. You are going to be deciding for yourself. For us, that would mean going with the Parsecs. So let us go with a low preset. It will give you ship combat engines, which I think is quite ideal, especially navigating an asteroid field does make the pilot want to change its baron. Combat engines are the fastest into the reaction. Traveling engines are, of course, the fastest into its traveling speed. For your mining ships, probably go with a combat engine. Combat thrusters gives you more stats on, say, your yawn, your pitch, your roll, and your acceleration. Shields, weapons are, of course, going to be mining drills. Burst weapon output, yeah, they're a bit faster. Do we really want to waste our money on Mark II of these weapons? I kind of never do that, so I'll leave that up to you. Getting two turrets for mining. Some of the rudimentics. You don't need a police scanner. Targeting computer is for small items. So you're going to be hunting down small asteroids and sometimes you'll find containers and stuff like that. Targeting computer will actually allow you to target that. Trading computer extension allows the ship to bypass a station and updating your trade. Long range Mark 1 is more than enough. And the docking computer, well, if you're not flying the ship, don't worry too much about this. Yes, you will speed up the AI because, my god, even the AI can be horrible at docking a ship. So, maybe just a Mark 1. As for Flash, from what I know, the Argon Federation would be some of the only faction actually using missiles. So, I do like to pack 8 Flash because you just never know. In terms of service crew, it's always good to have a few start leveling them up. Some tell you that it will make the turrets react faster, some tell you that it doesn't. Honestly, I just take them for whenever I need to do a mission in which you need a two-star engineer. Right now, we are at 365. Let's add that to the, to the queue and confirm that order. Now, for the next bit of this uh, tutorial thing, I've decided to go to our mineral mining ship. This is our very first medium and mining ship. Now, in order for us to find a good place to set him up as a local other trader, there is one option we can use that is maybe not known to everyone. 
So let's get into a hut. What we need to check out is this pilot's level. So let's open up the assignment of ships, press the I, and we can see that the Plut Plutus Mineral uh, Vanguard, his pi this pilot is, a, is not even a level one. And we're going to be looking into something that's called repeat orders. For that, you will, will need a level one pilot. Now, if we go to our Vanguard, hit that, we see that there is actually a pilot with two stars. However, up here, it says one and a half star. That is because its morale is quite low. Let us switch these two pilots. So let's select our mineral miner and right click the Vanguard. Transferring crew with, and then there is an option exchange captains. Let's confirm that. And I want you to keep in mind that the further the ships are apart from each other, the longer it will take for the next captain to be on the ship you just assigned it to. You can transfer basically any amount of crew all over the entire galaxy. In my Split Warlord campaign, I use a dragon to supply my rattlesnake with fresh marines without even having to dock to uh, any of the uh, spaceports. This guy just showed up. He is the new pilot, so we can actually move along. So in order for us to locate a potentially interesting field, so in order for us to understand where we can set up this miner, automatically and trade its goods, we need to find a place where he could potentially mine. Now there is ice. However, we don't see if there is a base that would require ice. So let's change that. And this is a very rude idea on where a certain good is actually bought. So clicking the ship, going to your behavior, then to repeat orders and confirm that. When you right click the sector, you can say sell in. This will give you a drop down menu of all of the goods that will be sold in this system. So in this system, there is no base that would buy any of the ores. There must be something in here because, well, we have some patches. Like the red indicates there is actually ores. And there is an encyclopedia. So it will tell you, it's the button over here, that the gas regions are blue and the mixed regions, the mineral and the gas regions, are purple. Let's go back to what we were doing. Pressing the information. Cell in here. What is to do? Okay, we have ice, but that's it. Well, ice is not the most interesting commodity to sell, and it actually is in that base. And you can say, well, we could have seen that. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's go to this one then. We see basically nothing, so let's right click and sell in this system. We need ice, there is ore, and there is a base that requires silicon. Well, we don't know that, but apparently we do. So if you go to this particular system, chances are likely that you will find a base that needs any of those goods. Okay, so let's turn off trade. As you can see right now, we have found a hop silicon refinery as well as a hop refinery. Unfortunately, due to my relation with this certain faction, I cannot update my trade order, but I did check. These are indeed the only systems that buy those goods. So while we're here, there is a huge asteroid field. By hitting your scanner and getting close enough to these asteroids, as you can see over there, we have 
a blue asteroid which contains silicon. We'll have a larger asteroid that is somewhat uh, oranges that has ore. So whenever you want to play the ore miner, just point at an asteroid, start hitting the asteroid and it will mine it completely down. Now, sometimes some of the missions require you to get lodestone, unstable crystal, or even space eggs. And these can be obtained by mining asteroids down or getting close to ships that are mining in a certain sector because there are a byproduct. And you can use your container magnet again in order to get them. And we'll know soon enough because now we're going to be using our container magnet to draw in the materials surrounding us. And you can see that the ore, the, the turrets are still doing their thing. And hopefully we'll get into some manageable sections and there you go we just received let's pause here an unstable crystal these are used to create spacesuit bombs there's a few other ingredients which you would need to get but this is basically one of the fastest way to get them whenever you need them let us go to the place in which I know I want to set up my local auto trade. For us, that is going to be Grand Exchange. As you can see, there is a load of resources required. And this ship will be extremely busy in its time. It will be spending in Grand Exchange. However, we do need to repair. Uh, uh, we do need to prepare for its arrival. And that means that we do need this Vanguard to drop down some satellites. Hope that that disappears relatively fast. Because I want you to just be on a hold. Now if you have something like this, which is annoying, just right click. Removal orders and assignments will bring it back to hold position and that is what we need. So we're going to be right clicking near the ice factory. And we're going to be dropping down a satellite. We'll also do that at the locations that require say ore and silicon. And you might need to buy a few more satellites. But at least you will be having a mining ship that is giving you uh, some passive income let us get out of this seat because apparently I was sitting on this guy's lap. Um, awkward. And let's set up the local auto trading or mining. Trading we'll get into. Waiting for a signal is not needed. We are going to set this up as a local auto mine. The where that we're going to be mining, I like to start with silicon in Grand Exchange. One, let's take a look. Silicon is in free, so Grand Exchange free will be the anchoring space. It doesn't matter, at least, it doesn't matter to my knowledge because I still believe that in he will indeed, he will still go. Over to Grand Exchange 4 to mine to sell the goods at a silicon refinery. Now local auto mining will limit you to just one ware. And getting to advanced auto tray, uh, actually to advanced uh, auto mining will need you a level 3 pilot. This will take you a while. So... In the future, expect another video and that will help you mitigate this problem. But for now, all that remains for you is to just make sure to place satellites at places 
where you will be selling your wares for your miner and making more money by doing missions. Don't shy missions because missions will do so much more than just giving you money. It will give you a relation. It will give you intel on your sectors in a more enjoyable way than hitting the long range scanner and going from question mark to question mark, which I will most likely be doing in our Vanguard when I get to a base and I can actually tell him to pick me up. So with that, I'll leave you guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Hopefully I was clear. English isn't my main language. So it is somewhat struggling to make decent sentences. So it might just take a bit longer than four. usual. Anyways, that's it for now. Next time we're going to be looking into a local auto trade. And potentially using repeat orders for trading. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.